got a car full of camera bags because today we're on the search for the perfect photo rucksack. So the perfect camera bag helps us transport all the equipment and the other bits and pieces we need on a shoot to where we need it comfortably. We need that bag to protect the equipment from knocks and from the weather and we also need to be able to get to our equipment easily and quickly. So let's start by looking at this bag. It's a Low Pro Pro Trucker 300 AW, and for six years, this was the bag that I've bit, that I used for my landscape photography shoots. It's had a hard life, and it's earned its keep. As you can see, it's quite worn now. It's been a good bag, but definitely not a perfect bag. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> One thing that drives me mad about this rucksack is when you're putting it on, this strap often gets caught up there. And when you're in the wind and the cold with gloves on, it really becomes quite irritating. But it's got a really good harness, this back camera bag. It's really quite comfortable. So in my camera bag, I've got around about 20 kilos of photographic equipment and other bits and pieces such as water, scotch egg and all sorts of filters etc. Now often I'll need to walk several miles or more towards my chosen location. So what's absolutely essential for a photographic backpack is a comfortable backpacking harness. Straps everywhere. So this camera bag is comfortable to carry and it offers good protection for all my equipment. You can see really good padding there, which is an essential requirement. I've also got within the camera bag good room for all the equipment that I need to carry. As you can see, I've got a DSLR here with battery grip, a long lens and four other lenses, plus plenty of space for things like filterings, spare batteries, other filterings, filter holders. So on that level it's a good bag, but there are some things about it that I'm really not happy with at all. Take for example this flap here on the back of the camera bag. I use it for keeping my filters pouch, my filter pouch, plus a filter holder in there. But the thing is, when you're working away, you open that bag up like this, you're working away, then you go to close it and stuff falls out. That's really irritating on location. In fact, I've lost a filter holder that way. The other thing is, as with so many camera bags, there's just not enough room for all the extra stuff I need to carry. For example, my lunch, water, a spare jacket, extra clothing. So I really like having a camera bag like this open beside the tripod when I'm doing a shoot. All my equipment is really accessible and easy to reach. A camera bag where you're having to fuss with straps and buckles and the like will drive you mad over the years. But the problem with this camera bag is, and all camera bags of this kind of design is that by necessity, I have to put the camera bag down on the ground with the straps and the back in the mud, which means photographers using bags like this are destined to live with muddy backs. You always lose a camera uh, lens cap, of course. 
on virtually every shoot and then find it maybe days later in the depths of your camera bag. I tend to uh, carry my camera body separated from any lens with its own dedicated space there because the trouble with carrying it in the bag with a lens fixed to it is you can guarantee it will be the wrong lens. It just slows you down when you're working. It's a beautiful summer's day today but you know even in midsummer on a dawn or dusk shoot I would typically need to take a fair bit of extra stuff clothing etc on any dawn or dusk shoot and that's a real trouble with most camera bags because the manufacturers just don't seem to understand that. So this is all the stuff that I would normally take on a typical landscape shoot. Okay sometimes which lenses I ch take would change but essentially this gives a good idea. Here on the left is all the stuff, the photographic stuff, the camera, the long lens, a couple of uh, shift lenses there, 24 to 70 zoom, a 14 mil lens, spare batteries, polarizing filter, filter rings, cable release, Swiss army knife, business cards, you never know who you might meet on location, lens cloth, memory cards, another filter holder, my filters pouch here, but then on, stop, on top of all that, there's the other stuff we need to take. For example, a rain cover for the camera and lenses. Extra clothing, in this case a jacket, a sweatshirt, scarf, gloves, hat. On top of that, stuff like sunglasses, a bungee to suspend the camera bag from the tripod to give extra stability. And then bits and pieces like my wallet, car keys, phone, and of course, a water bottle. Getting dehydrated on a shoot is not good at all. And lunch or a snack. It's a lot of stuff. And actually all the extra stuff on top of the photographic equipment is what most Len, uh, camera bag manufacturers don't consider. Take for example this camera bag from Manfrotto. Now within the bag I've got good space for plenty of cameras and lenses and really good protection as well. It's also a comfortable bag to wear but the big problem is where on earth do I put all of this stuff? So on my back at the moment, I've got a camera bag by f-stop, which gets around some of the problems we've been talking about with some really interesting solutions. So this camera bag has access to the cargo space from the back, i.e. the bit that's in contact with my own back which means that I'm not going to get a muddy back. So that's quite neat, opens up this way and inside what we have is inserts. Now what uh, you can customize what you carry inside the bag really quite usefully. I've got an insert here at the bottom which has got my camera kit in it and at the top of the bag is full of the other stuff, the jacket and my lunch and extra sweatshirt, and stuff like that. The one drawback to that kind of system is that as you can see it's not quite as easy to get into, not as quite as accessible as the other camera bags. So there is the insert that I've got in the bag there with all my kit in it and up top the other stuff quite a neat solution. So let's look at what I've got in the bag. Starting at the top, this pocket here, I've got my filters pouch. And in here there's some useful little compartments, always handy. The more compartments the better. Now if I come into the main part of the bag here, 
in this pouch here, wallet, phone, car keys. All quite secure in that pouch there. Then I've got my weather cover, scotch egg, jacket. Over here, water bottle. And down here, in this back pouch here, map, sweatshirt, hat, gloves and scarf. Anything more Dave? Oh, down the bottom, yeah. head torch, really, never go out without that. Bungee. And around the bag are various straps and the like which enable me to strap extra stuff on should I want to. And then within the bag itself, the insert containing the photographic kit. Now the bag itself is probably too big for flying with, but you could pack your camera bag in the insert, check that lot in and just walk on the aircraft carrying this. And then there's an extra insert you can use here if you want to take less clothing and more camera kit. All very useful and quite uh, an imaginative design. But there's one drawback to it all, and that's the accessibility. I think it's just the kind of camera bag that I would use if I was hiking in the mountains and I needed to do a long route, carrying a lot of extra clothing and food and the like, and maybe even a tent and everything, and carry less camera kit. But for a general purpose, day-to-day -day camera bag, I'm not sure it's the right one for me. So this is what I've managed to pack into this one insert that was uh, at the bottom of the F-stop bag. So I've got my DSLR body with battery grip. Now, quite frankly, that's a little bit too tall. I could feel that camera bag, that, sorry, top of the camera digging into the back of my back with the battery grip on. So probably I would take this out off for a long hike, save weight. I've got two lenses here, sorry, three lenses here, batteries, filter, rings, etc. And of course, if I wanted to take more, I could use the second insert. So if I'm going to be hiking long dif distances, this is a really good system. But having the camp, the kit split between two different inserts and having to get into various different compartments to access it means it's going to slow you up working in the field. David, if you were hiking, yeah. what would the minimum kit? Well, do you know, sometimes when I go hiking, I would probably just take maybe a body, the 24 to 70 lens, and maybe either the 70 to 200 or the 100 to 400. So two lenses and a body filter rings, you could really get away with quite, quite a lot less. Which you'd get in the small bag and then free up more space for hiking equipment. That's right. So a bag for hiking in the mountains, not necessarily a general purpose camera bag. On my back now is a bag by Mindshift, a Horizon bag, which I think is really quite a neat bag for hiking uh, because let me show you a feature it's got here. I can just push this down here like that and then pull this insert out like this, open up this and here I have my camera and lens and other stuff accessible and it means I don't have to take the bag off my back. Now what I can get in this insert here is not a huge amount. Maybe one camera and two lenses and a few other bits and pieces. Nevertheless, for day hikes in the hills and dales, I think this would be a really kind of useful bag. Definitely 
one that I'm going to be using more over the next few months. Clearly when it comes to camera bags, size matters. But there are occasions when a small bag is a distinct advantage, particularly in crowded urban environments. I've had this little Lopro Micro Tracker 200 for years now and it's proved really, really useful. If I'm out and about shooting in a market in Bangkok or walking the streets of Paris, I don't want to be getting on and off the metro with a huge camera bag. I'll be going out with just a body and maybe a couple of lenses. And uh, this little bag here is just really handy for that. The camera bag I've been using for the last few months is a Mindshift Backlight 26L. And uh, it's a camera bag with one novel feature. And that is, it enables me to get to my kit with a little bit of struggling without having to take the camera bag off my back. And uh, there you go. Well, how useful is that? Well, clearly if I was stood in a quagmire and didn't want to put my camera bag on the, on the deck, this could be quite handy. But it has to be said, that's a lot of weight to be su suspended from my waist and it's not at all comfortable. So I wouldn't want to be like this for long. But that aside, it's a camera bag that I've grown really to quite like. So David, those of us with extra girth, is it, is it going to be more uncomfortable? <laughs> quite possibly. So let's have a look at this bag in detail. Now, it's quite a useful size. I can fly with it without too many worries. I'm not going to stop, get stopped at the departure gate. Uh, water bottle in the side in this convenient pouch. I have on the other side here, I've strapped my rain jacket there. Not ideal, but nevertheless, it's a solution. I've got a flap here which I can keep stuff like phone in and the like. And I've got quite a spacious back compartment here. You could put a laptop in here. I've got a sweatshirt, hat and gloves in there, plus head torch. And then in the main compartment, which is accessed again from the back so we avoid that muddy back situation. I've got a fair bit of camera kit in here. So come in on this, David, and have a look at what I've got in the bag. So what I like about this camera bag is I've got room for virtually all the kit I'll need on any one shoot, hopefully. DSLR with battery grip and one, two, three, four, five lenses, filter pouch and all the accessories. What's more, the kit is immediately and conveniently accessible. I can put it on the ground there and work from this camera bag really quite, uh, quite easily. That's really important. I've got a fair bit of room for the other bits and pieces I need as well, clothing, water, scotch egg, etc. Not enough though. And really what that all comes down to is the fact that this is a good camera bag and the one that I'm using most of the time these days, but it's not perfect. In truth, I don't think the perfect camera bag exists. Maybe the one conclusion we can draw from all this that we've done today with this field trial is we need different bags for different situations. Hopefully though, this field trial has been useful for you F11 members when it comes to considering which bags are going to be for you, right for you.